Hey guys, welcome back to Good Earth Homestead and Eden's Angora. I'm becoming a bit of a mad batter over here. So excited about making these absolutely beautiful bats blended from our own Angora. This is actually my friend Elisa's Angora um, from some babies that she bought from me last year. So Angora is a little bit of a rebel fiber in a lot of ways. Maybe you've drum carded other fibers, but Angora, you just can't get it to work for you. So I wanna show you a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way on how to make pure and blended Angora drum carded bats. So let's put our hair up, Whew. get the Angora out of the air and get to work. Okay, we are here in the fiber studio where all of the Angora magic happens. Okay, so first things first, your drum carter itself. You want to get the finest um, TPI or teeth per inch that you can get. Angora is obviously one of the finest fibers in the world. And so you really need these teeth to be close together. As far as placement, a lot of people have custom made tables. I don't, I have a freezer and I will kind of press myself against this part of the carter and use the wool to help balance. Basically, all you need is a flat surface that is very, very sturdy. And you need this handle to be able to hang off the side so that you can crank it. So there's just a few simple tools that you'll need. Not that anything about a getting a drum carter is really simple, but it will make your spinning life so much easier um, and more enjoyable. So aside from the machine itself, you're going to need something like this, which is a cleaner for your liquor in, which you don't wanna get anywhere near. Um, and it will also clean your main drum out. This is called a packer brush. Um, again, you can kind of take a look at these, a dog slicker, right? Maybe some kind of shoe polish brush. You could also um, use things like that if you don't want to invest in the tools themselves. The next thing I highly recommend you do invest in is a bat pick. I've used crochet hooks, all sorts of different things when I lose my bat pick, and none of them work very well, or anything close to the real thing. You're also going to need your fibers. So today I'm going to be blending this black llama and Merino Blend from Oklahoma Mini Mill, um, who I wholeheartedly support and who supports me. And also this Junior Angora Fiber. As I mentioned, this is my friend Elise's fiber from her two rabbits, her French Angora she bought from me. So we're gonna be doing around about 70-30 blend Angora majority. Uh, now, a lot of that is just gonna be coming from your own brain, Woo. right? Um, you're gonna have to just kind of figure out mentally how much you're gonna put on the carter. I, I don't really mess with weighing them to get it exact. If you're into that, then more power to you, not me. This is an art form for me, so it is very organic and not necessarily exact. All right, now's the point in the video where I start revealing all my secrets. We're gonna start out with a little layer of the llama and believe it or not, it's a very wonderful and soft fiber. We're doing kind of a stripedy yarn. It's gonna be um, a color gradient that's not exact per Elisa's request. So we're kind of gonna be sporadic in the way that we use this. Now, like I said, you're gonna learn my secrets. Normally people load the drum carter like this, right? I am not doing that. This is fully prepared roving, right? There's no need to put it through the liquor in and he causes a lot of problems as you probably already know if you have a liquor in. So I'm gonna just drape this directly across the, the main drum and I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna just put it in kind of sporadic chunks and let this carter do its thing. Okay. 
Now, like I said, we're going to do this in stripes. Um, so it's okay that there's a bunch of empty space. I don't mind that. I'm going to fill in that space with Angora. All right. I think this is going to be much easier for you to tell what I'm doing. Hopefully that is true. So now I'm ready to start out with my Angora. Now this Angora hasn't been picked, so there are some pieces of hay in it. First, you want to just kind of pick out um, take a look at your fiber, see what you're working with. Um, we're making a smooth yarn, so any little neps or little mats, they have to come out of the fiber. If we were doing an art bat, then we might not have to go through that extra step. Okay, so again, we're not going to put this on the liquor in. It is going to inadvertently do its job as it rolls around the main drum. We're just going to put this directly on the drum itself, and I like to just slide my hand across as I'm going. Try to get it even, and as you can see, that liquor in is filling up with stuff, and I used to think, oh, that's the fiber that's too short to be spun, or to be, yeah, spun eventually, but that's not entirely the case with Angora. Because it's so fine, it just kind of floats on top of this main bat and gets caught in this liquor. But as you'll see, as I pack it down with the packing brush, a lot of what is on the liquor will come off onto the main drum as we go. So we're gonna pack it down, be careful with your fingers, only grab the top part of the brush and try to get that good and packed down. And as you can see, the liquor is mostly clean now at this point. So we're ready for our next layer, another layer of llama. Okay. Breaking that up. There's so much creative freedom with bat making um, so some of this is style. I think you are probably smart enough to figure out what is style and what is technique. They're two different things. We're going to pack that down a little bit and get ourselves some more Angora. Look through it. If it looks good, I'm going to show you kind of what happens if you load it this way. It's just all in one chunk, see? It's just very uneven. I'm not happy with that at all. It's not gonna create an even bat. Now I could continue loading more as it goes all the way around, but then I'm gonna clog up my, my carter. And I just know that from actually doing it. There are so many different ways you can drum card. So, you know, vary your sources. I always say that, um, but this is what has worked for me and hopefully it'll work for you too. Okay, and please leave any questions that you have in the comments. You can even pause it and do it now if you have any, and I'll come back to those questions later. So you don't wanna push a giant pile of fiber in there. It's just not gonna work out well. It's gonna clog up your machine. And we really want this main drum to comb the fiber, right? We want it all laying the same direction. And I find that loading it onto the main drum by the handful helps it to get combed a little more evenly too. This is only our first pass with the drum carter. We are making double carded bats. Again, if this was an art bat. I wouldn't mind that it was a little chunky and maybe not all the fibers are laying the right way, but we're actually going to turn this into Angora roving before we spin it. And we're going for smooth and consistent yarn, like I said. So mimic the personality you want to see in your yarn, in your bat. So we want smooth and consistent but we don't want the color to be consistent, so we can have a little bit of fun there. I say it like making consistent 
yarn is no fun. And I, I guess I do believe that to a certain extent, but it's very helpful as well for, especially for knitting, I'm finding. Okay, so we put a lot of black on there and you can kind of see it's starting to fill up. I don't think you can see that, but I can see that. It's starting to fill up a little bit. You can pack a lot of fiber onto a drum garter, but it's still gonna fill up at some point. And I don't like to overload the carter when I'm working with Angora specifically, because like you you can clearly see, it floats. It just, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> so we wanna get it nestled down into that bat. So I work with it a little bit at a time. And I find that we're, that's what works best for me and for the fiber. Okay, so now it's time to introduce you to the bat pick. Um, you'll find a break here in the teeth of your drum carter and there's a break in the liquor in which we can clean out later. So you're just gonna stick the pointy end of your bat pick right underneath your fiber and pull up. Okay. Perfect, once you have this loose end, I like to roll it back on itself and try to keep it even all the way across. Now there is another step you can do as you roll, but since this is only the first pass through, we're just gonna take it off like this. I'm seeing another piece of little hay. So we just keep picking it out as we go. And you can see I left some fiber on the carter. I don't care about that right now. We have a bat and there is going to be a smooth side and a rough side. Okay, so we've already got the smooth side sorted out, so we're gonna put the rough side up, and that's gonna go directly in the liquor in. So I'm just bunching up my bat and letting it hang down off the end. And again, if this was an art yarn, I would stop here, this is done, but it's not. So now we're gonna turn our handle and feed a little bit of this bat underneath the liquor in. Now I'll grab my bat and as it starts coming out onto the main drum, I'm gonna break it. Because what happens if I don't is the fiber will continue to roll around the liquor in and it won't actually go onto the main drum. So definitely half of our battle is over because all of the fiber is laying the right direction. Just kind of our purpose here. However, we still have to go through the process again and pack it down and make it into a really nice solid bat. Especially the second time through, I do not skimp on packing. Okay, so you can see some of it has rolled completely around the liquor in. And I'm also demonstrating inadvertently how your drum carter will just wiggle around if it's not really secure. So I'm gonna take my cleaner brush and clean off my liquor in a little bit or at least break up this fiber that's getting stuck. And then I'm gonna go in again with my brush. And now is when you really wanna focus on consistency too, like there's more fiber over here and in the middle than there is right here. So what I'll do is I'll roll my bat over on itself and only feed it in on the areas that are a little bit sparser because this is gonna make for consistent roving. Nobody wants to get a bat and then try to work with it and some of it's really thick and some of it's really thin. That would just be very annoying. So if you feel like it's not getting brushed enough, you can use your cleaner brush, but it will be rough on your fiber and kind of go over it a little bit. 
and brush it down in. This packer brush is a little bit more, more for packing than for combing. It doesn't really comb the fiber out if it's not laying the right direction. Okay. I'm gonna pick up my bat again, which is looking quite messy at this point, but make sure you keep the fiber all laying the direction that you want it to end up. Otherwise, you're not helping yourself out at all. And again, just feed it in and break it, and then feed it in and watch when it goes on to the main drum, then you're gonna break it and then pack it. All right, and then you guessed it, feed it, break it. And sometimes it reminds me of drafting because you'll kind of pull back as your fiber's going up onto the carter and make it thin out a little bit as it goes. And I love sliding my brush across the top. It's, even though I'm using a machine, it is such a handmade thing in itself. Um, we're using tools, but you control so much of the process. And I just love that. It's still like just such an art form. And it took me a really long time if you want to look at my first drum carding video, it wasn't that pretty. It's taken me a long time to master it, but it is a hundred times over worth it to process my fiber like this before I spin, especially now that I'm going professional. It just saved me so much trouble and it's so fun. All right, so enough on reasons why you should get a drum carder. So this is our second pass through, right? So we're gonna, I'm not gonna fully clean off my drum carter because I'm just gonna keep right on going and making, I batch tasks. So like all of my, all my bats that I'm making that are this color, I'm gonna make them all right now at one time. It just makes it easier for me and I don't have to just continuously keep picking every little bit of fiber out of my drum carter that's not the color of my next bat. Um, so that's a little pro tip there as well. You can batch like colors and save yourself some effort there. But we are still going to clean off our carter a little bit, try to get all of this fiber together. Sometimes it just gets a little stuck. So you can kind of just fan it out a little bit keep all these fibers together and then we're going to roll it and we're rolling it really tight trying not to let anybody get left behind and now you can see there's some llama that is not quite coming up all right we got some of that it is a lot of work to fully clean out your drum carter, which is why I say I do like colors at the same time. And I should also say there's still gonna be a smooth side and a rough side to this bat, but it's not gonna be as dramatic of a difference as the first card through. All right, we made it. All right, guys, here is our finished bat smooth and beautiful and ready to work with. Here's the rough side and you can see how smooth it still is from being run through the carter twice. And it is just completely amazing and fluffy and ready to spin. I hope you guys found that video helpful and informative. If I didn't answer any of your questions fully enough or you would like different techniques demonstrated, um, please drop those into the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel and my homestead. I really appreciate it. 
If you'd like to help in a more direct way, I do have an Etsy shop, Eden's Angora. Um, you can look me up on there. And we also have a website now, goodearthhomestead.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.